Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Today we're going to be talking about Cobalt Strike. Uh, this has probably been our most requested threat snapshot, um, that along with Bloodhound, which will be coming soon. And for those of you somehow unfamiliar with Cobalt Strike, um, this is a command and control or C2 framework that's used by, uh, legitimately I should say, by red teams and penetration testers in a lot of organizations. Uh, but this tool has also been uh, stolen and available to a lot of nation state actors, criminal organizations, and that's exactly the reason why we want to cover it today's snapshot is just because of the prevalence of its use. It's a very powerful tool. There's lots of threat intelligence on it, lots of reports. Um, we're going to pivot over to Mandiant Advantage, uh, Mandiant being one of our partners. And we'll take a look at some of the information that they have here on Cobalt Strike as well as Beacon the Malware. So in Mandiant Advantage, you can see um, some different analysis here on the tool. You can see associated actors. I'm going to actually pivot over to their beacon page because this is the actual name of the, the malware implant, um, the backdoor, and uh, you can see here quite a bit of information, um, various indicators of compromise that they've seen over the years, all of their different news and analysis, and a really good listing here of all the different capabilities. Um, so as I mentioned, this is a command and control framework. Um, but they do have a lot of built-in commands. So you can see here, see here things like capturing keystrokes, um, communicating, again, C2 over DNS, um, HTTP, HTTPS, SMB, internal traffic, um, creating processes, creating threads, directories, interacting with the file system in different ways, um, process injection, process hooking. Um, again, it can really do just about anything you imagine, whether it's a built-in default capability or one of the extensions. Lots of things that we could do um, today, but we're just going to start out with a very basic session in Cobalt Strike, and we'll take a look at this in Snap Attack here. Um, definitely other content here, and again, this is a very powerful tool, so we're just really scratching the surface here to give a little bit of an overview. So we do have a Windows 10 victim stood up here. We have Beacon Loaded. Again, use your imagination how that got there. Perhaps that was a spear phishing email or some other initial access vector. And then we also have the um, Cobalt Strike interface up here on Linux. And we can take a look here at some of the different steps. And again, that's one of the great things of Snap Attack is we can see what the operator is doing, what the red team or what the adversary's view is. So over here, we're going to get that initial access with Beacon. We're going to see it pop up here in the panel. So we can see that um, initial callback. Uh, the operator can then go ahead and interact with uh, the Beacon tool. Um, one of the first things that we're going to do here is we're going to escalate. So you're going to see here um, it's going to use the, the service creation, um, creating another process on the machine, and then we have another beacon callback here, this one running as system. So we can do some additional commands here. Um, one of the things we're going to use is the built-in hash dump command. So this is going to uh, reach out and touch the LSAS process to uh, dump hashes from the host, and you can see uh, the response there. You can see some other activities, so um, using NetView, um, we can um, interact, we can uh, drop to a shell, we can run a command like who am I. Uh, lots of different things that we can do with this framework. Again, really just kind of scratching the surface here. Um, you could see we gathered a screenshot from the, the desktop, um, just using some of the built-in features. Taking a look here at the timeline of execution, again, you can see with the red markers um, where the attack happened, um, what the objective was, as well as detections for it. So when Cobalt Strike was launched, um, there's some detections that we have around name pipes. Um, we can see, you know, when we were doing that escalation, some of the service creation events, um, dumping hashes, we can see some of that internal communication again, as well as um, some of our LSAS detections. And then again, further detections along here. Um, do you want to pivot over to the process graph because again cobalt strike can show up very well on here um, again we can see beacon launching and again with the default profile uh, we can see it spawning um, at least two run dll32 processes um, again this is a default configuration um, most actors and red teams are going to shy away from that because again this is highly detectable but um, if somebody doesn't uh, change these configurations, you can definitely alert on those because run DLL shouldn't be spawning in the, those ways, especially without arguments. There are certainly detections around that. So um, might not hit all the nation state actors, but it'll definitely catch junior red teamers. Um, but there's definitely other detections here for it. 
Um, but we wanted to pivot over and let's talk through some of the detections. So we've got two detections here around named pipes. Um, named pipes are an internal uh, IPC and um, internal process communication or inter-process communication. So this can be used legitimately between two different processes to share files or, or share data. Um, it operates kind of like a file where one will write to the file and another will re read from it. Um, again, this is a Windows feature here, and uh, this is also used extensively by Cobalt Strike, by Metasploit, by a lot of different tools, especially when you have um, processes that kind of fork and run um, to be able to communicate with you know, a different process here since they don't share memory space. So uh, Beacon by default has some very um, common names. Again, they have this in their OPSEC guide on things to avoid. So. Um, conveniently, they name things like post exploitation, the status command, the tasking, the MSS or the MS agent, and that default name pipe is an MSSE um, with a random string and then server. So we can definitely see examples here of those, um, not just on Cobalt Strike sessions, but we do have other named pipes too from um, other C2 frameworks. So you could use PSExec that has its own name pipes, um, Posh C2, Crack Map Exec. Lots of different tools, lots of different pipe names. Again, this is really looking at defaults, but there's definitely other analytics around just name pipe usage in general. Um, it's a little bit more of an obscure log source. Um, some EDRs log it, some EDRs don't, so there's gonna be some compatibility here, but um, it is definitely a very good way to detect Cobalt Strike activity, because again, if we go back to um, our timeline here, just about every command here, we could see that internal named pipe communication going on. So frequent named pipe activity too is also an indicator. Um, remote service creation. So again, this is how we um, were able to escalate privileges um, by launching another service on the machine. Um, in this instance, again, if we actually um, scroll down here and if I find that uh, process. So we are um, looking at a built-in Windows event 7045 um, we can see here that this is actually creating an image path on local host in the admin dollar sign share, and it's creating this uh, you know random string process name. Um, again, this being a really good um, indicator of compromise for uh, Cobalt Strike and being a really good detection. Um, but ultimately, again, this can be used internally on the machine or can be used, um, again, if this were a remote machine it was connecting to instead of um, local host, this could be used for lateral movement. So, good detection opportunity there. Um, after that, if you recall, we uh, did some credential dumping. So there's some um, general uh, detections around LSAS activity um, built into Windows or 4656 um, with specific access flags. Um, you could also look at this. This is a different uh, detection that has a more comprehensive list as well as um, some whitelisted processes here that are, are typically used and allowed to access this. So this definitely has a, a little bit higher confidence, lower false positive ratio. And again, the last thing we'll just kind of mention here is um, when Beacon is doing a lot of its, um, you know, spawning additional processes to run activities. Um, if we go back to that process graph here, you can see that run DLL that was spawned and that's how we actually dropped to our CMD, our interactive shell and ran who am I. Um, there are definitely, again, some poor OPSEC things here around um, run DLL32 running without command line parameters. Again, this is very much indicator of default beacon behavior. Um, again, this is just another analytic around just bad OPSEC around um, processes, particularly these sacrificial ones like run DLL32. But again, it can be others like WER fault, um, lots of other ones in Windows here that just don't have the proper command line arguments. So again, if you wanted to take a detection like this, um, you know, with snap attack, we can see it's validated. We can see that this is a pretty high severity detection. Um, pretty good confidence here. Um, in snap attack, there's relatively few hits, but this might have a little bit more in a production organization. We could, again, with one click, go ahead and deploy this to one of our integrations. So I'm going to deploy this to uh, Microsoft Sentinel MDE here. And again, with one click with that configured integration and snap attack, we can deploy this to one of many uh, integrated tools that we have support for. Um, Chronicle being a new one that we've added just because of that partnership with Mandiant and again, their uh, recent acquisition by Google Cloud. So 
Anyways, um, that's our session today on uh, Cobalt Strike and Beacon. Lots more coming around this. Um, this is going to be available in the Community Edition platform. Links will be below in the video, so you can definitely check this out. You can check out detections. And uh, like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Hope you found this useful.